Okay, so the weekly UI prompt today is a boarding pass, and I'm going to do that for mobile. Um, I feel like that's kind of a thing that's becoming almost necessary for airlines to do mobile boarding passes, so we'll go with that. Uh, the first thing I'm going to lay out here for my wireframe is the departure and destination locations, and I'm going to make that the largest piece of information on the screen because um, that way you, when users come, they can quick hit see if they're at the right spot. Um, we also want to add in the flight number here, and that's obviously or associated with the location, so we'll keep that information next to it. And then we'll add in the date and the time of the flight. And that way we have general flight details up top here. Um, then down below, I will add personal more details about the flight. So we'll add name of the ticket holder. I'll throw my name in there. Um, and then I'll make the label a little smaller so that the actual data point is the piece of information that is first read. And then we'll add in a seat number, make one up. I'm going to bring, well, let's try putting the gate number up here. Um, is that right? Actually, I think I'm going to keep the information up top here more general. So it's just, hey, this is my flight number, where I'm going, and the date that I'm flying. And then the details about the flight can come down below. So we've got the hopefully the gate number down, and let's pull the let's put seat number up here, and we'll put gate information below, and then we'll make this the dep the boarding time for the flight. Um, and then that way we've got like personal information, who's this ticket for, where are they sitting, and then gate information of where do I need to be and when. Then we'll duplicate that down here, and we'll do departure time, and we'll do a an arrival time, and let's go with that for now. I'm going to then add in a placeholder for what gets scanned at the gate. Um, not sure what that'll look like yet, but we'll add that in. And then let's put in some actual, well, I say actual, fake information because this is a fake flight. Um, so let's go with, we'll say AA and some numbers. Make that a little larger, and then we'll put in some actual airline destinations. We'll say CVG in Cincinnati to LAX in Los Angeles. Um, and it actually would be helpful to, act to name out the cities that these airports are in, because I know some a lot of times the airport um, acronyms are not intuitive. So let's pull out LAX from that text field and we'll make it its own thing and let's play with the typography here. I think I want to go with something um, something pretty clean. Not a ton of personality but something that uh, is sleek and that is not sleek. Let's not go with boxes. Let's go with Bodo. That's a pretty tried and true one. Uh, let's try Open Sands. Now let's do Fira. I'm kind of on a Fira kick. It's nice and clean, but it still has a little bit of personality. So we'll go with that. So let's make the airport acronyms larger so that they have the top priority in the hierarchy. And we'll make some space. And then let's do some sort of connector to indicate which direction the flight is going. So take off in CVG and land in LAX, but we want to make sure that that's super obvious to the user. Um, so I'm going to play with the idea of getting an airplane in here, but to be fun, let's see if we can get a paper airplane. Let's see what we can do with that. So we've got the shape of the airplane, and let's get like a cutout in the center here. Make it a little smaller. 
And I think that that's actually going to get lost in translation. So I'm going to nix that idea. I guess that kind of gives off a bad impression too that our airline is made of paper. That's not good. Nobody would want to fly on that. So let's play in in a real airplane. So let's put that in the center here. And I went and grabbed this icon from Material Icons. It's kind of a go-to when I want to grab something quickly. So we've got our airplane in there, but let's play with the spacing on this so that it's actually legible that it is an airplane. Let me give it a little bit of breathing room. So let's do jumping around, I apologize. Let's go with that for now, and then let's make these cities about the, have kind of the same visual weight as the acronym. So they're not as large, but we'll increase the font weight so that they still get some priority in the hierarchy. Um, and let's make the date. Let's make all of the information here a heavier font weight so that it stands out from the labels. And it's a little bit easier to just kind of glance and see. So you'll notice that they, when you look at the screen, the data points are actually what are gonna jump out at you. Okay, so then we'll adjust the line heights and let's put in, what's today's date? Let's go with the 4th of May, 2020. Throw in that. Let's put in some real time and we're gonna go with boarding time is at 12.07, departure is a little bit later and arrival. We'll go military time, because I feel like that's the easiest way to indicate I feel like that's kind of, that's what flight airlines usually do, right? Um, so let's play with some spacing a little bit. I'm gonna move that down, move that down. And let's start introducing a little bit of let's put the spacing here actually first. I'm gonna try to make that line weight the same as the airplane body, and that way it feels kind of like a continuation through the airplane. We'll get all of that centered up. I'm actually going to introduce some color here. So let's go with this bright blue. Blue is a color that uh, introduces trust when you look at color theory. A lot of uh, like hospitals will use blue and it kind of gives off this clean vibe, but it also is like a color that gives off a, a, tr a feeling of trust. So we'll bring that in because that feels important when you're getting on a, getting in a giant piece of metal to fly in the sky. You want to be trustworthy. Um, so we'll make that our brand color. Let's go with a gradient here for the airplane. I'm going to make it a little lighter than the actual line color here so that it stands out a little bit. And I'm going to actually make these two separate lines instead of having this be a hard stop in between. And then that way we get the curved stroke on either side. And let's make play with the color here. Space that out a little bit. And then we'll make the left side that light blue so that the gradient feels like it's a continuation here. And then I'm going to bring in the color elsewhere so that it's not only on that graphic there. I'm going to make the let's play with the spacing here. Do we want to put the location up top and then have the date and flight below it? Keep the line spacing appropriate here so it matches. We can left align those. Yeah. I feel like that's getting lost a little bit on the bottom with the details below and on top it feels a little too top heavy. So I'm going to nix that. We're going to go back below. I'm going to move that one back up and I'm going to play with getting this on a single line. What font size is that? Is that all the same type size? How does that feel? Bump that up a little bit. 
And then the date below. This label is bothering me. In line, it feels too big when it's the same, but it feels weird being smaller in a single line. So let's go. Let's go with it being the same size. That feels better than the having the two line. Okay, so I'm going to start putting in a barcode here for the scanning of your ticket. And let's play with some just varying rectangle width. So I'm going to start repeating these and playing with spacing and widths. And this is pretty monotonous, so I apologize. Cool, I'm going to space those out a little bit more. And then fix this because that's way way too close. And then let's do another repeating one and then we'll grab those guys and let's get it a little wider. Just too wide, but let's put some rules in here so that everything aligns. Alright, do a hundred pixels off of each edge and then we'll get this guy to be inside of that. Okay, so we've got our barcode. What else do we want to do? Let's, I'm going to put this on like an actual ticket. So if we put a container around here, do a white background. And we'll make it a little smaller. And fit inside those rules. Actually, let's undo that. Let's make the card smaller because I don't want to make all the elements smaller. I like the type sizes we're at. So we're just going to make the container smaller and then adjust the spacing more appropriately. I'm going to have the container kind of go off the bottom of the screen so it kind of feels like it's popping up. We'll try that. Um, okay, so we got our barcode inside of there and let's get a background that's sized appropriately and on the artboard so we'll make it that bright blue and now we can see our container okay so we will bump the content over so that it is contained nicely in this nice narrow ticket that we've got going I want to try to make the container look like an actual boarding pass so that um, feels a little bit more real, I guess, um, and familiar for users just because, I mean, they're used to holding paper tickets in their hands and we don't want to completely derail what they're used to and reinvent the wheel and it creates a bit of comfort and more trust just if we're creating that familiarity. So we will play with the, I'm going to see here. I was going to throw an airplane background in there, but I think that that might be too much. So I'm going to stick with the solid blue and then I'm going to bring, I never finish introducing this color because my mind is all over the place. Um, so we've got, the, let's introduce the blue for the actual data points and that will allow users to very quickly see like, okay, the things that I want to look at are blue. And then if they need to figure out what exactly that information is, they can look at the label, but that way the, information stands out really prominently. And I'm going to actually introduce this idea of indicating whether something is being is delayed. Um, so I'm going to say, I'll make up a number, 32 minutes delayed, and we'll tuck that in there and we'll indicate that is a problem with the red. So visually when you look at this, you're going to get an immediate indication that something is wrong or something you need to pay attention to on your flight. And for this instance, it is your, uh, your delayed. So we will add in the red text here and do the same thing here. Because if your boarding time is delayed, that means your departure and your arrival are also delayed. So kind of a domino effect. So we will introduce that. I'm making up times here too. I think a flight from CVG to LAX is about three hours. I have no idea. So let's make the labels a little bit smaller because I feel like they're competing a little bit with the data points. So I'm going to make those a slight smidge smaller. And I think that I'm happy with that at this point. Let's play with maybe introducing a slight gradient here. So let's actually do 
gonna use that lighter mate or I guess the medium blue for my light here and then go all the way to the super saturated vibrant blue for the dark and we'll go at an angle there creates a slight dimension here and then I guess we should add a brand here because when you're looking at a, um, a flight you're not going to just be looking at the ticket you're going to be wanting to know which airline you're flying with so let's add a fake one here with awesome arrow lines and super basic type mark let's play with font weights and be done with that get some clever spelling in there okay let's get this all centered up what happened with that oh I grabbed the guides okay so let's try that again center and we'll get it back on the artboard and let's get what's going on okay let's lock the guides we'll group the information and then now let's center it okay that was harder than it needed to be and let's go with a back arrow because if you're looking at your boarding pass you also want to be able to get out of there and you don't want to make users stuck on the screen and so let's add in an arrow here oh, I don't like that arrowhead let's back that down in size uh, let's pick a little smaller we'll go with that maybe hmm. these arrowheads okay we'll go with that and then let's get that left aligned there and let's bump this up a little bit and make sure that our spacing here is appropriate it looks even okay I think that's good okay and then the date, we're going to pull that down and move that up. Still not really thrilled with the way that this, not convinced that this is right. Let's see, move that to the right. Oh, that feels off balance because everything is left aligned. What if we center it? Hmm. That was not what I wanted. Okay, now let's center it. Mm, that feels a little funny with the logo here being left aligned but not but centered on the screen and then having that text centered below it. So let's make that logo a little bigger to deal with that and then let's add in a little menu icon here because there are going to be other things that you can do with this boarding pass but um, we'll tuck those into a menu all right i think i am happy with that now i'm going to bump everything down a little bit and give us a little bit of breathing room up top here which means that i need to bump this barcode up and do that. Let's move. I keep second guessing myself. Sorry. Okay. Let's bump that up. And I think we've got it. So um, let's add a drop shadow here to add a little bit play to add on to that dimension that we created with the gradient. We'll make it subtle though because we don't want it to be super overwhelming. And then we'll create a clipping mask so that we can create our dribble shot. Um, so we've got our screen here and let's get it on the artboard for our dribble shot. Going with the recommended 1600 by 1200 for that. And then let's add in a background here and we'll send it to the back. And I think I want to keep this pretty simple. So I'm going to stick with that gradient and kind of repeat that and add a drop shadow to the phone screen mock up. 
And let's get those centered up on the artboard. I think we're losing the screen a little bit too much though, so I'm going to actually add a black object behind here and then play with the opacity to try and get that background to darken up a smidge just so we don't lose the bottom of our phone screen there. I'm going to it's a little flat in here now that I've got it mocked up on the screen, so I'm going to actually play with the idea of making this look more like a ticket. So if I bring that down and play with the idea of ticket stub and being able to like rip off the barcode, so I'll make the bottom corners less rounded than the top to kind of indicate that it's connected here. Um, okay, I'm going to have to go into this clipping mask. And we'll get rid of the drop shadows so they don't look like they're on top of each other. And then we'll do the drop shadow together on them. Okay, so we've got that ticket. It feels like it's a little bit too much on top of each other, so we'll add a little spacing there. To play on this idea that it can be ripped off, kind of play on the like perforation. Let's move everything up a smidge, and this bottom one is feeling funny hanging off the bottom like that with us introducing this like rip off idea. So let's move that up so that it's not bleeding off of the screen and that it's contained and we'll move the barcode up so it's centered and I think I think that what's going on with this oh sorry I think that is good with the uh, ticket there sorry I backtracked a little bit okay so now I want to introduce a simple pattern to the back here, so I'm going to play with the shape of this airplane, and but try to make it subtle, um, and just kind of a tint of that blue in the background. So we're going to do a, a transparent white outline here. What happens if we actually get like a legit pattern going here? And play with that a little bit. Hmm. I really want that to align. Eh. I think that might be too much. So let's actually get rid of those. And I'm going to play with just like a big one and get that font, that stroke width down a little bit. I'm going to simplify this a bit and do one large and one small. So if I get the large one here, in the small one and let's get their rounded corners at the joints. Um, and I'm going to adjust the placement here. So we're going to make this a little smaller and kind of tucked up here and then we'll make the big one a bit larger and kind of bleed off of the edges so it feels more like a texture and then we'll tuck that small one up there And there we have it. I think that is what we've got. And thanks for joining me. Let's do this again next week.